Previously, we used integrals to predict the path of a projectile, which I thought was pretty cool. But the problem was I introduced all these properties of integrals without really explaining why they work like that or, or what the logic is behind those. And I did that because I wanted us to have a motivation to learn integrals to see some of the cool stuff we could do with it. Um, but now I'm going to take a step back and we're going to look a little bit more closely at some of those really neat integrals that we missed before. And here was the first one, integral dt equals t plus a constant. Remember the constant of integration is like the initial condition. So if this is, um, if this is a function we're integrating over time, then the c, the constant, will be what position were we at the at the uh, at time equals zero, or what velocity did we have at time equals zero, or etc. So, what does this mean? Integral dt equals t. What what exactly are we integrating here? There's nothing in the integral. Well, in fact, you are integrating. There's like a one here. Think of an imaginary one. And our function that we are integrating is 1. It returns 1 everywhere. And to understand a little bit better uh, how this integral works and why it returns t plus a constant, I'm going to draw a picture. I'm going to draw a picture. This is a graph. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. And if the function we're integrating is 1, then saying that here's 1 on the y-axis, our function might look like this. This is f of t. Now remembering that integrals are an accumulation of a rate function, f of t must be some kind of rate function. That being true, what is, is it a rate of? Let's take the geometric interpretation and say that f of t is the rate under which the area underneath the yellow curve is increasing. So if I draw a line here, and that is, <clears throat> that is the current time t, then the area between the y-axis and this green line underneath the yellow curve and over top of the x-axis is going to be is going to be accumulated by this function by by our integral and uh, hopefully it make a little more sense when I highlight exactly what area we're accumulating here so you can see if, if f of t grows increases then we're going to get more area down here. If it decreases, we're going to get less area. So that being the case, it should be pretty easy to calculate this integral by hand. We're going to get the integral of dt is the area of this guy, and that's just a box. And the area of a box is base times height, base times height. The base of the box, well that should just be the right hand of the box minus the left hand side of the box. So that's t minus zero. That is t. And that'll be multiplied by the height of the box. Since it's a constant function, the function equals 1, then the height of the box is always 1. t times 1 equals t, plus a constant. Uh, it's very common to forget that constant, so don't forget the constant. So now with that under our belt, and, and bear in mind, these are not terribly rigorous proofs of these properties. If you take a calculus class, then, not that one, this one. If you take a calculus class, then you are going to get very rigorous proofs of all of the things we're covering here. And if you really want to learn integrals well, and derivatives, which we're going to study later, then I highly recommend picking up a calculus book and giving it a try. Because you'll learn it at a much, much deeper level than than I really have time to cover here. So let's let's do this again. 
um, I talked about this integral of t to the n, dt equals 1 over n plus 1 times t to the n plus, this should be a 1, plus c. So I'm going to cover a specific instance of this. I'm going to take a look at when n, n equals 1. Okay, so when n equals 1, then we're going to get the integral of t dt. This is t to the 1 power, which is just t. Okay, so the function that I'm integrating is t, which is a very easy function to draw. That's why we're looking at this one, f of t equals t. And we're going to, again, use the area underneath the integral interpretation. Okay. So I'm going to draw my t right here. And this is the area that we're going to find. So what have we got? The integral of t dt is going to be this area, which is, well, that's just the area of a triangle. That's the triangle. And the area of a triangle is 1 half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. The base of the triangle is again t minus 0 is t. Let's keep our 1 half here. And the height of the triangle is well we have to evaluate the function at t. And if we take t and plug it into our function f of t equals t then we're just gonna get t again. So this is 1 half t times t which is 1 half t squared plus c. Now I'm starting to see a pattern here. Now I'm starting to see a pattern. We have 2 down here and 2 up here. And as it turns out, that matches when n equals 1. We should get 1 over 2, t to the 2. So this is consistent with what we have back here. And in fact, if we go back to what we did originally, then we can pretend that that was n equals 0. Now t to the 0 is just 1. And the answer should be 1 over 0 plus 1, which is 1. So that's 1 over 1, that just goes away completely. t to the 0 plus 1, which is 1. So you kind of have a 1 up here. And you can see that this uh, property that we covered before is really just a special case of the property we're covering now. So that's really cool. In fact, this will work for any polynomial uh, when n is any real number except for negative 1. It won't work for negative 1. There's a different rule for negative 1. I'm not covering that now. That's a surprise. You'll just have to wait for until you take a calculus class. So what do we have next here? we covered the integral of a plus b dt equals the integral of a dt plus the integral of b dt. And that is a really neat formula, but I'm actually going to make it a little more general for us. I'm Instead of a and b, which are constants, I'm going to use any function any two functions of t. It can be integral of t plus t squared, or it can be integral of 1 over t plus yada yada, anything you want to, this rule will apply. That is equal to integral of ft dt plus integral of gt dt. Now why does this work? The key to understanding this guy is to remember that integrals are just sums. So Ultimately, this integral was let's go with uh, n here plus y to the n was a sum of two functions like this. Okay, some function x here and some function y here. In fact, I read up here that x here corresponds to f and y here corresponds to g. So then knowing that, let's write out what this integral looked like. 
I'm sorry, what this sum looked like. Start with x equals zero. I'm sorry, start with n equals zero, and then n equals one, and then x two plus y two, etc. Now I'm going to rearrange this sum, and again, this goes forever. This goes forever. I'm going to rearrange this sum. I'm going to collect all the x terms first. We have x zero plus x one plus x two plus forever. And then I'm going to list the y terms, y0 plus y1 plus y2. Okay. Now what did that give us? We have two sums now. We have a sum of x's and a sum of y's. So we have a sum of x terms plus a sum of y terms. This is an n. And the idea is that if we can do this with sums, and an integral is just a sum, then we can do it with integrals too. Should be no reason. They're in fact the same thing, so there should be no reason we can't do that with both. Uh, now I'm going to use a similar line of argument to show the last thing that we covered yesterday, which was integral something dt equals integral Okay, a times an integral equals an integral of a, where a is a constant, a number. This time we can't do a function. We can't do a function for this. It's got to be a number like 10. So the logic, the logic again is pretty similar. An integral is just a summation. So we are summing some kind of series, xn and we're multiplying the entire sum by a. When we expand this, we're going to get a times the sum. So expanding the terms of the sum, I'm going to yeah, yeah, etc. Now I'm going to distribute. I'm going to distribute this a into each term. We're going to have to use our imagination a little bit because there are an infinite amount of terms, so we're just going to have to kind of Imagine that we distributed this a to every term, but I have no problem with that with that happening in my imagination. So now we have a new series where each term is each term is a times x n the nth x in the series. So again, you can see the a was outside and then it popped inside at the end. And if we can do this with sums, then we can do it for integrals as well. So now I think I've covered a little bit more thoroughly some of the most important properties of integrals. And uh, next video we are going to continue with some derivatives.